Hello guys, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to actually cover about the data which we would be using in this piece of code, which I am going to discuss with you today. And the focus would be to make you understand how the banking data looks like. Also, how to run your first NumPy and Pandas import code in your Jupyter Notebook. So let's move forward and let's discuss without wasting your time. So guys, as you can see, I have come on my screen. I'll just type Jupyter Notebook. I have already explained to all of you that how I need to install the Jupyter Notebook Anaconda distribution in short. Okay. So let the Jupyter Notebook open. It takes a couple of seconds. So guys, this is my Jupyter Notebook. Okay. Now, first thing, click on the file, open a new notebook. So when you'll do it, you will simply get a cell like this. Okay. Now in this cell, you can write simply a command to import numpy and pandas in a single command. Okay. Let me tell you that command. So exclamation mark pip install numpy space pandas. So this is very simple guys. Okay. Now you have to just hit enter to run this. I just need to shift enter together. Now this has ran successfully and you can see all these requirements are already satisfied, but when you will write this command, so in your system, if numpy and pandas are not there, so you will get it. Now, let me give you a background about numpy and pandas before I move forward. Okay. So for that, I need to open this notebook and let me remove all this stuff. So let me give you a background about what is the role of numpy and pandas for calculating PD, LGD, EAD. Now, number one is your numpy. So guys, let's talk about numpy first. Okay. The full form of numpy stands as numerical Python. Okay. And when I say numerical Python, this is basically used to manage effective array array is what array is a collection of data. Okay. Which you have already heard if you have not heard. So numpy is basically used to define array and array is you can assume it. Let's say you are working in a bank. Okay. So you can put all the customer which are there in your database in a single array. Okay. Only the customer, but there is an, there can be separate array for individual type of need. Okay. Numpy provide powerful and fast multi-dimensional ND array to you. So effective array also we call it N D array. What does that mean? Like N dimensional array. So that's why numpy is heavily used. Other than this, there is a mathematical operations, which it provides maths operations. What is the meaning of maths operation? It supports basically vectors or any multiplication, etc. So basically array, what are the operations you can perform in an array in any programming language? All of that you can do using numpy and numpy is a base for pandas guys. Okay. It includes build in function for statistics or let me mention that in a different way so that you can remember built in functions for algebra. So these are the three important thing which you should remember about numpy numpy stands for numerical Python. It's very effectively used because we want to use ND array in Python. So that's what it help us. Also, it has so many built in operations within itself. So many built in functions, mainly it is used for performing all the mathematical operations like vector multiplication or data manipulation, so many other things. And it has so many built in function for algebra or any other statistical programming which you want to do in any of the model and uh, model can be create risk model and a statistical model. Both model are used. Now let's talk about pandas in brief. Okay. So pandas is introduced as a series. Initially series were the basic unit for pandas. Eventually now we don't use series. The main evolution which panda has given, they are data frames. 
data frames are multi dimensional collection of data it's unlike array it's built on top of array okay it can handle data very nicely just like a excel it is in a tabular format so basically in relational databases you call it table here we call it data frames now it's very useful for data manipulation okay it's allow you to let's say sort merge and if you want to perform any grouping so all these options were not there earlier but pandas give you the flexibility that you can perform all these operations okay now in addition to that if you want to work with numpy or visualization library like uh, matplotlib pandas is a mediator between them because pandas data frame are eventually are converted into graphs that's how it works okay it has a very good integration integration power with numpy and other library like for example you have matplotlib and one more library which is data science library cborn so for now you just focus on this that's why i ask you guys to install these two library in your system now let's go back to our jupyter notebook let me quickly go back there so guys you can see that the jupyter notebook is having these two packages now you also need to make sure that you have these packages before you are moving on to anything else now let me show you the data so here is the loan data which i have let me quickly open this this has enough number of observation to perform any kind of modeling uh, you want to perform okay so let me just show it to you because there are so many observation that's why it's taking couple of minutes let's wait for it to open so guys the data is open now you can see there are customer ids let let me zoom it out so that you can see the column names which is the important thing here i hope it's very much visible to you see let me highlight this also so now you can see this is id customer id then member id so every database have so many type of uh, unique identifier so it can be same also it can be different but in this case the data is different like id and member id both are different then the loan amount which the customer have taken from the bank then funded amount then you have funded amount inter intervened basically let me expand all this so that you can see the complete column yes then we have the term okay basically this much have been already intervened okay now focus on the term so there is a term of the loan then you have the interest rate of the loan so every loan have a interest rate then you have the installments what is your installment and then you have the grade of the customer then subgrade of the customer then you have the employee title what he is doing then employee length then you have the home ownership status whether that person have the own home or rented home all these variables are actually used when you are creating any of these data now let me move on to some mathematical variables which are important so till column y you can see these are all related to the person now these are related to the banking stuff like delinquency in two year whether that person was delinquent in last two year or not okay so this is very important delinquency shows that what is the property of a customer whether the customer is a good customer or a, or a bad customer like delinquency flags will be there in your real time data and then so many other columns like this revolving balance then they have the initial list status whether the customer was f or any other status so it can be varying as per the company okay just focus on main main column like total account balance revolving utilization total payment how has been done total payment then you have a total payment again then you have a total received income so see if i go on a overall variable level this is going to be very clumsy for all of you because you have so many columns guys in the real time data also you have so many columns but very fa very fairly i would say that very rare columns need to be picked so in the upcoming videos i will actually tell you that what are the important columns which you will be using when you will be creating the pd lgd ad models and when you are doing any kind of model monitoring model validation all those things i will cover in the upcoming video now if i close this sheet without 
saving my changes. I am just closing it. So it's there in my download. So let me go to the property of this quickly and pick up the path of this file because I want to use this in my Jupyter notebook. Now let me open the Jupyter. Here comes the Jupyter notebook. Now I have a new cell here. So first let me put this path. Now in this video, the main target was to teach you that how to read the input. Now how you will read this input. So first of all, import pandas as pd. Because I want to create a data frame for creating a data frame. I need to import pandas. First of all, I install pandas. I showed you the data. Now I am importing pandas. So let's say file path, a new variable I'm creating and how I'll pass the path. That's very important guys. Okay. This is a syntax. I'll explain it to you why we are doing it. What is the name of our file is loan data, loan underscore data. Now just go to loan loan underscore data dot csv so using this r string you are basically reading this file here in python now guys why i used r here that is very important this r is important because if you see the backslash. Okay. So in Python, the backslash is considered as a kind of a string literal. It's kind of, uh, called as a string shifter. So some of the important string shifters are, let's say, if you use a backslash with N, this will shift a data to the new line. Similarly, if you use backslash T, this helps to put the tab there. Okay. And if you want to avoid this kind of situation so that Python can understand, they will read this whole data as it is. Otherwise though, what they will think if you write a N here, let's say N. So this will think that you need to shift a line here. So to make that concrete as a fixed value, as a constant, this path will be considered as a constant. That's why I'm using this R string, which we call string literal in Python. Okay. That is number one. Now, after this particular piece where you are defining the path, you need to create your data frame. How you'll create a data frame, any name you can give to the data frame. Let's say I give the data frame name as Rajat equal to now I'll call pandas pd dot and the function to read a CSV file is read underscore CSV. This is a function you should know to read a CSV file inside this file. What you will give simply now you need to pass this file. Now file path, I will copy put here. Now there will be a call to action. I have just created the data frame, but I need to call the data frame. Now I'll call Rajat dot head this. What is the meaning of head? When I call the head, this means that only the top five observation need to be shown. So now basically I'm importing the pandas as PD. That is number one. Then I'm creating a string literal. And then this variable will have a value of this file. When I'm reading this, I'm creating a data frame named Rajat and inside Rajat, all this file will be stored. And then in this line, what I'm doing, I'm just showing the top five observation from this. Now I click here shift enter. So let's wait for a couple of seconds. Okay. So you can see guys, this has read the data. Okay. So this is how you read the CSV file in Python. So it's a very easy code. Okay. Now I will post this code. This is a small code. Okay. So I don't need to paste it on the GitHub. What I will do, I will share this piece of code uh, with you guys. Uh, in the description box and also this data, actually you might need this data. So let me do one thing. I will put this data in the GitHub only and you can actually get this data from GitHub for your own practice. So let me do that part after this uh, video. Meanwhile, I think I'll conclude this video at this point. Now you can create a data frame in Python for your, uh, any credit risk model. So. There was nothing related to credit risk directly in this video, but this video was a building block to use Python 
in your credit risk modeling stuff. Now, very soon we will be moving towards the calculation of uh, PD, LGD, EAD. Before that, I will tell you how to clean the data. The data cleaning is also very important because that is the part of exploratory data analysis. I hope you find this video helpful and on that note, I would like to conclude this video. I will take a leave from all of you. All the best guys. I will see you in the next part. Thank you. And if you like my effort, if you like my video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much guys.